We got big opening night here in America. Yes. Uh, opening day was opening morning in Korea uh, last week with massive news coming out of that with Shohei and obviously Ipe Mitsuhara. What should we be looking at this evening that isn't a gambling-related story in the MLB? I mean, I love the Houston Astros, New York Yankees matchup right there. Uh, the the slate sort of starts at three o'clock now because a couple of rainouts earlier in the day. And and I'm not trying to be company man here, but the Texas Rangers won the World Series last year, and they're going to be starting their season against the Chicago Cubs. And it's it's starting a season that. I think it's going to be really interesting because we've got these two teams in the Atlanta Braves and the Los Angeles Dodgers that that really are like the cream of the crop in the league. They have the highest projected win totals. They look like they are going to be the best teams on paper. With the Dodgers, you've got the Otani situation that's going to be hanging over them. What's all that? Day long. What's the situation? What's the situation? Just as a uh, the, the situation is Shohei Otani alleged that his interpreter, Ipe Mitsuhara, stole $4.5 million from him to cover gambling debts. That is his story. What? We do not have the full story or the confirmed story at this point, but that is what Shohei Otani came out oh. during uh, a media availability to tell the world that he is sticking with. And he's still going to be able to hit the ball and throw the ball, but he's not pitching this year, right? Not pitching this year? Correct. He had, it wasn't Tommy John surgery necessarily. It was an elbow procedure, though. That's going to be keeping him out for the year pitching. So he's going to be the designated hitter all year long for the Dodgers. And He's playing you know, DH? Not, oh, yeah. That's oh, a yeah. lot he's of he's time good. in that bullpen thinking about how much money was stolen from him. Yeah, true. <laughs> We're not in the bullpen. A lot of time on the bench. Dug out, yeah. He's, he's going to be, you know, uh, Tim Kirchin, who is, uh, I think, the voice of baseball and the soul of Thank baseball. Thank you, Jeff. That That's very, very nice. Tim Kirchin is the voice of baseball, and he will be until the end of the time. It's here. Can you I keep going, Ty? I didn't know he was here. I, didn't, I, I just want to listen to it. I know I did, but that's why we love him. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, Tim Kirkchen, sorry. So Kirkchen's been covering the game for, you know, 40 plus years now. And when we were on baseball tonight yesterday, he said he thinks that Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, and Freddie Freeman is the best top three of any lineup in the history of the game. Whoa. And if Tim Kirkchen's saying something, like, you listen to it, because that man knows his history better than anyone. All right, so I'm betting on the Dodgers. Uh, I hope Shohei is too. Oh. <laughs> oh. Not that he gambles on baseball or at all. Right. But there's a lot going on over there. If he's able to remain mentally tough enough to keep a federal investigation, an MLB investigation, a trader within your own camp, yeah. and still hit a baseball that's coming in, which is a matter of like centimeters mm -hmm. of being an out or being a home run, you're talking about a real cerebral. You're talking. Assassin. Yeah. No, you know what though? That, that, it's like like a hangover that, flu that, game. That is what he has done his entire career. Think about it. He came to Major League Baseball six years ago with the idea that he was going to be the first player since Babe Ruth in MLB to try hitting and pitching at the same time. And not only did he go out and do it, he won two MVPs in the process. He redefined a position in the sport. He created one. Like, two-way player was something that nobody thought was possible. So the idea that he doesn't have the fortitude when he's got 50 people trailing him every day already mm. from Japan who are reporting every little tiny minuscule thing that he does back to their home country because that is how voracious the appetite is for Shohei Otani content there. Like, the guy already knows what it's like to laser focus, to put the blinders on, and to to just concern himself with baseball. And that's what he's going to have to do this year, because you're right. This is the kind of thing that's going to linger for a long time. How about all this superstardom since whenever teenager years has prepared him for a moment of a United States federal investigation mm -hmm. happening at the same exact time as the season starts? Oh, yeah. It gets announced the same exact day the season starts. It's like, good luck. Just sign the biggest contract. You're a D you're the biggest star for this entire season now. You either have to deal with the fact that somebody that was in your life and was your ears and your mouth completely screwed you over. Mm -hmm. Just completely preyed on you, took advantage of you, stole your money, lied to you. What else were they lying about? I mean, who knows? If this is happening, what else is going on? That's what he's alleging, which is terrible to have to deal with personally and obviously financially. Or the complete opposite, where 
a lot of people on the internet immediately think he was gambling. He's got to have a fear that they're going to find out about something that he did the entire time. Nonetheless, his entire life being stalked better yeah. has almost prepared him to be able to just keep everything out. That's mm -hmm. wild. If he has a good year this year. He will. Mm -hmm. That's bananas to think about. That is because how inside your own ears baseball is. That is a wild. Good luck, Shohei. Good game, Shohei. Unless you bet on baseball, then go to hell, Shohei, if you're trying to ruin the integrity of the game that we love. Okay. But everything we're being told is he did not gamble on baseball. Yep. No. Yep. Or the interpreter did not gamble on baseball, which is the biggest news of the entire mm -hmm. story. Tone Diggs has a question for you with a pirate shirt on. Yeah, I do. We're very excited for the Buccos this year. I mean, O'Neill Cruz hit about 30 home runs this spring, which was very exciting. And then our guy, Paul Skeens, was putting 102 on the black basically every pitch. My question for you is, here in Indianapolis, how many games, how many days am I going to go get to see Paul Skeens here in Indy before he gets called up to the Buccos? Because I think there's like a, was it 15 games or 15 day where we can steal a, a, a back end year on the contract? What's going on with Paul? Let's not screw over Paul. She no, already no. tried. Just, no, that's just baseball. That's what they do. It's Pittsburgh Pirates baseball is what it sounds like. Watch your mouth. Red Sox good. Nobody knows a single player on your team. Brain, <laughs> Brain Bellows about to be Sorry. the side. Sorry young. about that, Jet. Just Paul Skeens is who we need to talk about here. I was hoping we were going to get to talk about the Pirates because yes. I got to say, fellas, they're starting to get a little interesting. Yeah, they yeah. are, Jet. Would, we're playing baseball. Uh, and that's <laughs> why we're I, love would, them. I would make sure to go and see if Paul Skeen start in April okay. because I'm not sure he's going to be there by the time May comes around. Right, hey. and, and beyond that, you know, he's not the only guy going out throwing 100. Jared Jones made the Pirates roster. Yeah. And he's he been did, hitting around 100 all spring. You add those. Yeah, we got the Hundo it. boys. We get it. Yeah. Come see the Pirates and the Hundo boys make a run <laughs> into October. Is that what we're talking about here? Yes. I don't know if we're there yet. They they need listen. They need O'Neill Cruz to stay healthy and hit forty home runs this season. Both of which I think he is stop capable driving. of doing. Chapman, they need stop Brian honking. Hayes to go and and be the best version of himself. He's getting Old into love. his prime right now. They need Brian Reynolds to come back and be that four or five win player that he's been in the past. <laughs> that, foul. that might have been down the line. Foul went off. Yeah. Might have been down that the line. That was soft contact, speak. McAfee. <laughs> soft. It was off speed. It was off speed. Soft, McAfee. People hit home runs off change-ups. Don't you get What's three strikes? Excuse? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I fouled off one. He fought one off. We fouled one off. Sorry about it. Okay. Oh, what? Yeah, sorry you were fighting off at 12 mile per hour. Oh, you didn't get to, your eyes are messed up from that office you're sitting in. So much greatness is kind of maybe becoming a fog. Okay, you didn't okay, see. Okay, let's see it then. Come on. Let's see it. I mean, it was a knuckleball. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. That was a curveball. Oh, oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Yep. I got a chance. Uh, Park's got a question for you, Jet. Come on, boy. Come on. Jeff, what's going on, man? Big fan. Uh -huh. Appreciate everything you do. Is that false? Is that Foss? Yeah. Mike Foss is the, uh, you know, the younger looking fella. Cool tats. Yes. Do, you, do you know that, you know, Mike Foss, when I started my media career, he was with me at Hoop Streams. Like, no. yeah, we set records. We said, ask him about it. We set records. It I will ask. He's senior yeah. vice president. We, yeah. He's SVP. We, we, yeah, we said, no, we set record numbers. But look, this is not about me and Foss right now. <laughs> I need you to Hey, keep, congrats to you and Foss. Yeah, 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 with the hoop strings. Yeah. So I need you to tell me or give me life about my Houston Astros. Jeff. Okay. I need. I need oh, Cheaters, right? Yeah, oh. big time. Still. You guys cheated. Uh, that was way. Why are you bringing up the fight you? No, I'm just telling you what happened. Hurt, garbage can. Right? Exoskeleton. Yeah, they had the. <laughs> bzz, bzz, yep. bzz, that was on their chest. Yep. Like, who did we just meet? We just met somebody that was on the Astros. Was that um, was that uh, was that one of the Raws? I just met a guy. Oh yeah. Was that Monday Night Raw the oh, other day? Uh, Remember the Astros? Shook his hand. I said, oh, "So you guys did have the yep. right?" As soon as I said hello, nice to meet you, man. Good handshake. I said jet pass and said you guys didn't wear you the guys cheated, yeah. you guys didn't wear the little thing that kind of told you, but you guys did, right? And he goes, J just a trash. Can. Come on, just a trash. Can. Just right, trash. Right. I gotta go call Raw, but yeah. nice meeting you. Congrats <laughs> on championship. You're reporting on the Astros. I think Astros fans use all the time, and also MLB people do. You're down in the weeds of it. Did they die after that whole cheating scandal? Are they still a good team? Yes. Because. 
What? They did not they won die. a World Series. Yeah, yeah. did not die. Did. What? Won it all. Oh, this on, is like man. a Patriots type situation. Yeah, yeah. very similar. Yeah. When everybody said you can't win because you cheat, and then they go win the next yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Win the Watch this draft. Yeah. They've been to, they've been to seven straight American League <clears throat> championship series. Talk to them. Like, very good. Talk, talk to them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talk to and, and Perk, your Astros are going to be good again this year. That their pitching's kind of banged up right now. Uh -oh. Justin Verlander oh, really? going to start the year on the injured list. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Luis Garcia, uh, Lance McCullers Jr., Jose Arquiti, like. They've got some work to do when it comes to getting pitchers healthy, but they've still got Jordan Alvarez, who's one of the best hitters in the world. They've still got Kyle Tucker, who's one of the best players in the world. Jose Altuve is still around. Alex Bregman going to be a free agent after this season. He's still there as well. The, the, the American oh, League. Oh, there you go. There we oh. go. <laughs> oh, there go. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Hey, da Good swing, good hat, good hat, good hat. There we go, boys. One nothing, one nothing. I like Yo. you didn't you did hot dog it around the base either. That was good. Uh, yeah. That was a good, good trot. Work. Good pace. There's more coming. Act like you've been there before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'm done. I'm done on the Astros. Next, <laughs> Ty's got a question for you. Yeah, Jet, you mentioned Yankees Astros today, and Astros obviously have been a crawl in the side of Yankees fans for quite some time now. Uh, I just need give me realistic expectations because I am I'm prepared to burn the Bronx down if we have another season like we did last <laughs> year. And then also uh, sticking in the AL East, do you think the Orioles are going to be kind of that like? D-backs team this year that kind of comes out of nowhere, surprises a lot of people. Obviously, they made the playoffs last year, but actually, you know, like kind of dominates the East and maybe goes to the World Series. Ty, they won 101 games last year. Very good, they not I know. The East last year. Well, yeah. Like, they, the, the Orioles are what you wish the Yankees were. Wow. Whoa. Right? Mm. Wow. Whoa. I mean, is that true? Uh, I mean, yeah, with the, all the young talent, I think you could make that argument. Wow, sure. the Yankees sucks. They don't. They don't. They don't. That's what he just said. Tell him, Jet. Tell him. <laughs> he just, he just said no, I'm not going to say. I'm not yeah. going to say that they suck, but I, it wouldn't shock me at all if they don't make the playoffs. Oh, oh my God! Oh, <laughs> rise! I heard Judge was the guy. You guys aren't even making the playoffs. Well, that's the thing. If, he is. If Judge stays healthy and if Soto's out there, like they may score 15 runs a game by just pitching. He, Jeff said, "Yeah, I didn't say that they suck, but I also didn't say that they were good." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard. Park, you heard it too. Yeah. Park, you, I know. When you you lose Garrett Cole. Yeah. Garrett Cole's out for the first two months of the season. He's oh, the best pitcher oh, in baseball. When you lose Spence. Garrett Cole for at least two months and you don't know what you're going to get when he's coming back, how good do you feel, Ty, about that rotation right now? Are you confident in Nestor Cortez? Are you confident in Marcus Stroman? Are you confident in Carlos Rodon? Are you confident in Clark Schmidt or Luis Heal? Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, not great. Uh, Clark Schmidt stuff yeah. looks pretty good, but, I mean, it, it's it Rodon, obviously. He needs to have a bounce back year. Nestor, you're just looking for, hey, can you give can you give us four or five good innings? But I don't know if that's good enough to win a pennant. You know, the thing with me – and the Yankees is I wonder about their age and I wonder about the durability. Aaron Judge is playing center field this year. Yep. It's not easy to play center field really? for anyone. It's really not easy to play center field for a guy who's six foot eight and two hundred seventy five. Nah, it's a no fly zone now. It's a yeah. no fly zone out there. That's what I heard. That's what the boys are calling themselves. No fly zone. Thanks, Pat. They still um, playing one hundred and sixty two <laughs> games this year or no? Still playing 162 games this year. Is that not too many? Is that too not? Is that not too many, Jed? I mean, are we ever going to reconsider? It's, 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 it's a lot of games. It's a lot of games, and there's there's a not insignificant portion of people in Major League Baseball who wish it were like 140 or 145 and that they could get some off days in there. But once you're at 162, owners aren't going to turn their backs on yeah. the revenue that comes with all those games. So I, yeah. putting the toothpaste back in the tube there is unlikely. What's the big story? Whenever these 162 games are over for everybody, what's the big story going to be you're predicting here on opening day? I, you know, I think in the National League, it's going to be Dodgers and Braves. Uh, you have these two super teams that have been assembled, and it's almost like we're just waiting for the inevitability of them being in the postseason and facing off against one another. But then last year, Dodgers go and get swept by the Diamondbacks, yeah. and uh, the, the Braves get knocked out by the Phillies again. So the, the nature of the baseball playoffs is so interesting to me. It's the, it's the sport that has a postseason that least reflects its regular season. 
Like you don't see a whole lot of Cinderella's going to the Super Bowl, right? You don't see a whole lot of Cinderella's making the NBA Finals. The last three years, the team with the worst record in a league has made the World Series among the playoff teams. Like the worst record among the playoff teams has made it all the way to the World Series. So it, it shows you in baseball, like all it takes is getting hot for a month. And so a team like the Dodgers that should win 100 games this year and like the Braves, who I think could win 105 plus games this year, doesn't matter if you don't pitch in October, if you don't hit hit in October, then it's just a, it's a lost season. It's a, it's a, a, what could have been. And that's what all these teams, I think the Phillies included, since they still haven't won one despite world series in 22 NLCS in 23, um, you know, they're in that role where it's world series or bust as well. I can't wait to watch at least five of these games. Well, you know, this hey, season. You yeah, watch more. At when least, Pat, at when least Skeens five. comes up, five. Yeah. when Skeens five. comes up, you're going to watch, ev- uh, not every start. You're going to watch a lot of Paul Skeens starts this year. Oh, yeah. Every clip. Him, mm. Like you said, <laughs> like you said, 102 on the black. Livy Dunn's going to be at the game. You're going to be excited about that. Like, it's going to be a good time. We hope they're able to survive 162 game season. That's mm-hmm. a lot on a relationship, but I think they That's do love each other and we're happy for it. True love. But if I do see, <laughs> relax, Bert. When I do see a clip of him, with his towering presence oh, yeah. on that mount. And then I hear that shotgun, boom! Mm-hmm. And then the mustache rattles alongside of it. Yeah, I might turn the game on. I might, you're right. Paul Skeens right. will get me into baseball. So Pirates, let's get the hundo boys mm-hmm. rolling at the top of the lineup. Let's do this thing. Cool. <laughs> All, right. All right, Jeff, we appreciate you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Pass. <laughs> 162 games, I don't know how you guys do it.